Well, I'm almost out of lapis watercolor paint. So in this episode, we will go from the lapis pigment that I have to create paint to hopefully paint my next watercolor. So stay tuned. So greetings from Pumpkin Town Primitives. This is David Gillespie. I'm a portrait miniature painter. These are two examples I've done in the past. And today um, we'll be taking a little lapis lazuli in order to uh, make up a, a more watercolor pigment. So lapis lazuli has been used for hundreds of years in Europe to um, create watercolor and gouache and uh, other types of paint even egg tempera I suppose so it comes from Afghanistan and it has always come from Afghanistan pretty much this is the uh, the gemstone it's a semi precious stone and it has little flecks of um, looks gold in color I'm not a geologist but it's beautiful so I have a friend who owns the lapis mine in Afghanistan and he actually crushes his lapis up into powdered pigment for me and produces this powder here which we will use today. Here is an example of Hans Holbein using either lapis or azurite and also a hill yard piece using either lapis or azurite. Very well, so to make paint, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with paint making, um, paint in its basic form consists of two uh, major elements. Number one is it needs the pigment. So in this case, our pigment is lapis lazuli. It's a powder pigment. The vehicle is what carries the pigment. And in this case, today we're going to use gum arabic for watercolor. So the pigment is lapis and the vehicle, is gum arabic, equals watercolor. So if we did pigment plus linseed oil, it would equal oil paint. Or if we did pigment plus uh, egg yolk, it would create egg tempera. So, you start with the same pigment, but you end up with different uh, types of paint. So today, I'm trying to mix up just enough lapis to um, fill my little half pan here. And I'll start out by taking the, um, the cork out of my vial here. And I will empty a little lapis. <clears throat> out onto the marble slab maybe we'll start with that much there okay and then I have a little vial of fresh gum arabic here you can see how clear it is it comes from the acacia tree we saw one in Greece in uh, Corinth actually I'm going to uncork that and the way I transferred the gum arabic to the uh, the marble slab is I just take a paintbrush and use the handle so in this case I'm using a handmade paintbrush by my friend Eric Williams so Eric uh, hand sewed this end on and, and put the bristles on it's a long brush it's an oil painting brush <clears throat> and it's beautiful so thanks Eric Williams he used to be the chief ranger at 96 National Battlefield. So I'm also a stone cutter, and so I always have a ready supply of stone. Marble makes an excellent surface to do this with, and uh, I have a muller that uh, Renee bought in London 
when we were in England two years ago. This is from Cornelison and Son. And uh, it has a um, frosted bottom to it so that it picks up more friction. So the marble is pretty smooth, pretty glossy, and then this creates friction. So this is a, a glass muller from London. <clears throat> so I'll start by just taking and getting a little uh, lint or a little uh, gum arabic on the end of the brush or on the end of the, the back of the handle there. <clears throat> and I'll just dab a couple drops out here on the marble nearby. So now here's where the fun begins. So I'll just take the muller in hand and just start to slowly grind it up. And I'll always end up needing to add more um, gum arabic so it's really powdery at the beginning. So I'll add a couple more drops of the gum arabic here to liquefy it more. Like so. Now we're starting to get a nice deep color. You can really feel that, uh, the friction here. This is good. I have to go to my bigger vial of gum arabic. That doesn't seem to be enough. Let's try that out and see if we're starting to get in the neighborhood now. Oh yeah, now, now we're getting some blue in there. So I think I got it too thin, so now in that case we can just add some more uh, lapis to the mixture and just go back and forth until until we get it just like we want it that's the beauty of working in small amounts for a miniature paint such a beautiful deep blue color it's not easy to get that color any other way with a natural process so lapis was very helpful up until the invention and discovery of the um, Prussian blue around the early 1700s yeah that's feeling good now it's got a consistency of a really thick oil which is perfect it's starting to look like a nice royal blue don't you think Let's see here. Yeah. Beautiful. So at times I'll try to get my palette knife and kind of scrape it just to feel the grittiness and the consistency of it as I spread it out. And um, I feel like I'm going to need more, so I'll just keep adding more to it till we get enough uh, to satisfy what we need for this next painting. Lapis pigment, by the way, is very expensive. We were very blessed to have this lapis um, from our teacher, Miss Joan Willies, who lived in Clearwater, Florida, and whom I took miniature painting from years ago. And she was able to get this lapis and we were thankful for it and still are thankful for it it has lasted <clears throat> quite a long time <clears throat> <clears throat> but it can be purchased <clears throat> starting to get it beautiful look at there I must say it's a very satisfying feeling to make up
true gemstone lapis watercolor paint. So I have used this paint for about seven years now. And as you can see, it works. So I used lapis as the background for my wife's painting that I did back in 2014. And the blue is incredible. So I've got some around the edge here that is creeping away. So I'm going to try to bring it back into the fold. Right there. And a lot of times you can mix it with a palette knife as well. Mixing is mixing, however it gets done. So I think I'll go for a few more drops of the gum arabic here. By this point, it doesn't take much. It's starting to get um, kind of saturated now, which is good. Trying to go to the outer edge and get those remnants that we need. Okay, so let's see if we can start rounding some of this stuff up here. It's starting to get less gritty and more liquid-like. <clears throat> this isn't a pretty job putting it into the uh, half pan, but, but it will work, hopefully. hope you can see that. I may need to make some more. I don't need to fill it completely full like a normal half pan. This should be plenty to paint my little picture with that I'm about to start on. So here we go. There. So at some point it starts to set up. So you kind of have to work um, with some vigor. Toward the end. There we go. If you can see that, isn't that beautiful? And if I can attempt to Take some more of this luscious lapis blue off the bottom of the uh, muller. Be happy to do so. And then again transfer it to the uh, to the half pan. So even though this is simple, it's uh, something that you don't see done every day. And that's why I decided to make a video of it. <clears throat> Because it's a beautiful process and it's visually uh, appealing to even watch it. So I can't wait to watch it again myself as well. So I filled the half pan up about a third of the way. Get a close up shot there. So as you can see it'll dry. I'll let it dry overnight before I try to use it. But it goes from the stone crushed into the pigment. And then from the pigment mixed with sap from the tree gum arabic to watercolor paint much the same way it's been done for the last 500 years in england 